Looks like we got, you're interested in a board and train for a dog named Nico. Um, Correct. An Akita, ooh. And then your reasoning for reaching out was a little bit of anxiety, some dog aggression. Uh, so go ahead and um, fill me in on anything that I would need to know about um, Nico. Okay, sure. Um, so we're not new to owning Akitas. She's our fourth Akita. And mm -hmm. so we do understand, we do understand the breed and we understand, um, you know, their nature in general. Um, but this girl, uh, she, she came from a breeder that we just wonder if, um, maybe there was some mistreatment or something that happened that just kind of got her off to not a great start in life. And, um, so she's, she is she was born with a kidney disease which when we got her from the breeder um, either he did not know or he did not tell us but we um, discovered it because she had a urinary tract infection and it was you know it was pretty bad for like a puppy you know under six months old you just don't expect to see like the level of lethargy that we were seeing in her but anyway we discovered that um you know, from, I think we pieced together just anxiety. She never, like he sold her to us and said she was potty trained, but she clearly, it wasn't a potty training issue. It was that she was so anxiety ridden that she would um, submissive kind of the submissive urination kind of thing. And when she was little, um, it would kind of sort of not dry up or stay there. And it became this horrid infection. And from that taking her to the vet, we found out she had something called PKD, which is polycystic kidney disease. You may already know that. Um, treated her, got over that. And what we notice is um, she is, she's fearful of like big, large men, um, which was kind of indicative of the breeder. And then she, like other animals, especially if they stare at her, she is, she's, she's ready. She's ready to have a fight. And, um, so we've gone through some training sessions. We've, you know, tried to work with her when she's in a class setting. She's great. She is obedient. She's smart. She learns, she ignores like pretty much every other animal in that classroom setting, but walk down the street. And if a dog's across the street and it's staring at her or it starts barking at her, well, it's just like she's going to start lunging for that thing. Um, <clears throat> for humans, she's, she pretty much stays away from them. Um, however, too, like too often, um, I pretty much will tell people, ignore her, don't touch her, don't like pet her. She's not that kind of dog. Just give her her space. And if somebody is not obeying that command, like that thing, she'll, she'll let them know. Like she will, she'll growl or she'll, you know, tell them to back off. And, um, and so we just, we want to know if we're just not approaching this thing correctly, if we need to get her um, in a setting or in a session where she can have some more confidence in a situation and learn to like ignore some of these external things. Um, one of the other things that set her off is if I, if I pull a broom out and start sweeping, she is running out of that room so fast. So, you know, we don't know if where she came from in that like breeders uh, set up, like did he hit her with it? Was she like, was that used as a mechanism to, you know, keep her submissive. Like, we just don't know. And so, I don't know. Um, we love her. She's four and a half. And we are going to, like, stick by her and do what we need to. And I just thought, I read a, I read a review on your site about some man with an Akita, an aggressive Akita. And he was saying, like, really great things about you guys. So I wanted to find out more. <coughs> Okay. Um, your late, your lady did ask me like how I feel about electric collars and, um, we tried once and I swear, I think we were torturing our dogs. So, um, 
So right now I'm saying I'm against them, but I, I want to be an open-minded person and hear kind of what you have to say. Okay. Uh, anything else um, I sh we should know about Nico? And is that how you um, pronounce the name? I'm sorry, Nico? She's, I mean, she's just like, she's just afraid of so many things. And I think that that's what you see, at, like when you see her, like we live in Chicago, but we also have a home in Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan, she's in heaven. She, you know, loves this, the forest. Uh, yeah, there's some other dogs. We keep her on leash, but it's like, it's a beach. She gets to run, play. City of Chicago, I don't have to tell you. I mean, it's a whole different environment. Yeah. And um, so I get it. You know, I do understand like she would prefer the wilderness to a city, but you know, our life is like both of these things. So how do we get her when we come back to the city to not be so anxiety ridden? And so we're in a, we're in an apartment and the dogs next door, if they bark um, and she's like, in, like anxiety about that, she will then pee. You know, like it, it's not that she has to go to the bath. Akitas are like a type of dog. They literally, um, they don't have to go to the bathroom often because what they do is they ration their urine and drop it like all over the place. But um, when she hears something that's frightening her, that's how she takes it out. Okay. All righty. Um, anything else? No, I think... It, that's really it. She's smart. She's got a lot of anxiety and we want her to just, if she's smart, just need her to be more confident or we need to know how to deal with these situations that are like stressing her out. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and then um, a question we like to ask uh, clients on the Zoom calls or consultations. I mean, is like, you know, if you were to have everything you, you would have or everything you'd want um, with Nico, what would life look like? So like, for example, you know, do you, are you just trying to walk Nico, you know, around the block, you know, a good walk, and then maybe you take her to the dog park and then you need recall or like you take her to like an open field and you need recall and you go home? Or do you do other activities? Like do you want to go to restaurants or, you know, do you want that off leash off each hiking or like you know what 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 would life look like if you were to have everything you'd want with Nico the reason so the main reason that I reached out to you guys is all the stuff you're talking about is like she and especially in Michigan like dogs are welcome at every restaurant and yeah if there's other dogs we have to just be careful like to get her into like a sit like you know but if there's like good food around and there's a setting where she gets to go out with us, I think it's, it's, if she's with us, it's fine. And we know how to control her. Like if we're walking down the street, um, you know, to keep her, to keep her attention on what we're doing. Um, but it's also, it's reactive because we're like, okay, there's a little kid on a scooter. Scooters are another like human little kid on a scooter or a tricycle, we have to be careful because she hears the sound of the scooter or something. And I think someone told me that to, to the dog, it sounds like a growl, uh, like she might sort of jump or lurch towards that thing. We don't want her to do that. Off lead, other than Michigan, we wouldn't even dream of asking you if she could be a dog to be off lead in the city of Chicago. I mean, if we could get that, that's great, but that's not really a goal. The goal is for her to be confident and and in con, like in control of herself and know that all the all these things around her that are freaking her out um they're not going to do anything to her but the real reason i called you is i have an awesome dog walker sitter um and she um nico actually bit her once and um it was not because it was not because the dog sitter did something wrong it's because it was raining outside. The dog didn't want to go out for a walk when it was raining. Julie, who's my dog walker, like went to leash her. And as soon as she leashed, leashed her, Nico grabbed her hand in her mouth and Julie pulled her hand. And there was like, you know, a scratch slash, like it sliced her open. So Julie still loves her. Julie's still around. I dealt with all of that. I took her to the hospital. You know, I, I mean, we are responsible dog owners. Um, 
the same thing, this almost the same exact thing happened to my daughter's boyfriend. Like he went to grab the leash, put it on her when she didn't want to go out. And Nico like just clamped on and like, he at least didn't pull his arm. Like, he, like she did puncture him and we did have to get him like attention, but Nico's not like a dog where she like looks to attack. It's like, she, that's her way of saying, look, I am so stressed out right now. You are not making me do this. And like, I'm not doing it. And that's the warning she gives. Okay. So I can't have a dog biting people. So we're leaving, we're leaving in September for my daughter's wedding in Greece. Two weeks. Julie is signed. Julie still walks her and Julie still likes her, but Julie most definitely is like, going to be nervous if it happens to be a little bit rainy to take Nico out and I don't blame Julie so I asked my uncle who Nico knows my uncle and um, his wife well his wife drank a little bit too much one day and she was teased like Nico's a dog you don't want to tease her was doing something and then I could see Nico raised her lip she didn't do anything to, to my uncle's wife but raised her lip and I'm like I said to my husband I'm like I I cannot leave. I'm too nervous of leaving Nico in the care, even though these people all get it. And no, I need her. I need her to be. And I thought, okay, I ran into your thing. Maybe. And before we leave for this wedding, if this works out, I would want to bring her and have you work with her and train her so that she knows who you are, because we've never been this dog. It's always been like someone's watched her at home. So, if we do the board train, if this works out, that's, that's the reason, like I reached out to you guys, but like once and for all, I just want to get to the core of why, why she is so anxiety ridden, why she has such like, um, like if we leave and then she's just, um, Oh my God, you're, you're home. Thank you. You know, one of those reactions when we come home, she just, she can't be relaxed. And so, just want to figure out if maybe, you know, we do this and then have her have this situation. The last thing I need is to be at this wedding for my daughter, get a phone call. And the dog, the dog did something to either my uncle's wife or something happened to Julie again, or, you know, or something. And it's too, it's too stressful for me. And Nico likes like a setting where she can learn and be trained but I also know that when Bryce and I tried to, like when we worked with someone with those electric collars, I mean, like I, we just thought we were torturing her. So um, that's the reason I said the thing about the electric collar. So hopefully that gives you a little more flavor. Um, like we just want her to be relaxed when we're walking anywhere and not have to worry about every little thing that's like coming her way from wherever, whether it's a dog or a kid on a tricycle or a scooter or a guy on rollerblades or, you know, anything like that. We just want her to feel like, hey, whether I'm in the city or in the forest, it's all good. Okay. Um, and then real quick, um, for the reactivity, what is she reactive to again? She says, I know you, I caught on to scooters, bikes, and then dogs, and then anything else? Yeah, and, and it's then, mostly right? like... It's yeah, you got that right. It's mo it's dogs that like if they're passing by her and they're also anxiety ridden and they stare at her and then they start growling like that is gonna set her off. She can't ignore that. Um, and even if the dog's far away, it could be across the street. Like if she sees that that dog's looking at her like that, um, you know, it's it's one thing where we're at my in laws' house now and they have a female dog. And they put their dog up in a bedroom, two females. I mean, I've always heard that's the best like situation. Yeah. I can't have her like harming things or biting things just because of whatever's going through her head. Um, so yes, to answer your question in a long way, it's really, it's really to be in a situation where she can just literally ignore that and know that it's not like a danger for her. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for the e collar, what what happened there? Like what? Um... Okay, this lady, you know, she was supposedly like trained in it, and she was I don't know if she was a police person or what she was, but she was selling this one brand of e collar, and she came out to the house and like worked with us and the dog, and 
she had, you know, she starts it on like a lower power and she was doing this too. Um, not just us. Um, and the, and, and she notched it up a little bit and a little bit more. And, um, I don't, I, I didn't think the dog was like responding or reacting to it, but she had turned it up so high that like my dog's face was like the, the, like, imagine if you were getting electrocuted. It's like, like I saw her jaw and her teeth like shaking or, or like chattering together. And, um, and she wasn't doing what she was being told. And I know you guys work with Akitas. I don't want to break this dog. I just want her to be like trained by somebody who understands what an Akita personality is. Yes, they're stubborn. Yes. Yes, they're not as easily trainable as, say, like a German Shepherd, because that's the other dog we've owned. But you can't, like, I don't want to break this dog where she's so, like, you know, I'm thinking of, like, um, the guy on um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Like, you can't give her a lobotomy. You know, it's sort of a, you have to, like, know, she has to know that she can trust the person training her and is going to do that because she knows that, hey, this is all under control and I know I know that the person helping me learn this has got my back. I, I don't, I, I'm not in your shoes. I just know that people who understand how to like deal with animals, it has a lot to do with what you're also thinking versus saying, like it's got to all come in sync together. And an Akita is so adept at picking that up that um, like I'm guilty of it sometimes. Like, I mean, if I see something like that, I'm probably, stressing out too like uh can't have my dog like attack somebody a kid a person a dog a cat you know like i can't yes she chases squirrels in the forest but she never gets them they run up the tree mm -hmm. so okay. and then uh what do you remember what kind of what kind of e-collar she was using i you know i don't because after that we just stopped <laughs> we we're like we're not using it i have the e-collar somewhere i could probably tell you but it was, um, I, and maybe, I, and maybe when I, I'm not at home right now, but when I get on my computer, I can see, but it was, it was a while ago. It was, um, okay. Okay. yeah, she was four and a half. We tried to do it early on because we could see something was up with her. Okay. Like, do you remember, do you remember what the, what the remote looked like? Was it like yellow or was it like, was it like a circle or? Um, maybe yeah i mean maybe that brings a bell um the woman was in like the suburbs of chicago i mean i could probably jump on a computer after this call and just look it up really quickly um and maybe there's different ones that work differently and maybe maybe we weren't doing it right or maybe she really wasn't doing it right i don't know what thing was all i know is when i saw her like jaw like chattering like we were electrifying her i was like Oh my God! No way! Take that thing off of her. We're not doing this to this dog. Yeah, that's that's weird. Because I mean, I'll get into it. But the way that our brand works, it doesn't. Um, it there's no there's no how do I say it? it's there's no electricity going to the dog's body to the point where like they're stuck, right? Because if they're stuck feeling something, you're not allowing the brain to think. So ours is like a very quick um like uh, yeah i'll get into it i'll explain later but that's yeah that's that's telling me it's it's that's i don't know that's it's just a weird uh like reaction yeah it was and you know when we've been in like dog training classes with all of our dogs and a lot like some trainers use like that clicker sound like so maybe like the zap you're talking about mimicking like that clicker sound where they know when they hear that clicker they're supposed to do something maybe it does that but I mean, I have seen like huge, large German shepherds where people are walking them and they have these things on because the German shepherd looks like it, it's like trained to possibly like, attack or kill somebody. So I do understand why sometimes those are needed, but you need to know how to use that on that animal. And it needs to not be in a way where the animal is um, like broken um, from it or like hurt from it, which is what we thought we were doing to it, to our dog. Okay. Um, all right. And then uh, what do you walk Nico on currently? Like, do you guys use a prong collar, a harness, or? We use a choke chain, like one of those kind of. Um, so the other, one of the trainers we had years ago was like, you know, that same thing I'm saying, like when you, when, when it like 
when you're pulling on the choke and it hears the chain, um, it's supposed to do that. Again, that's not great when there's another dog around because the last thing we want to do is be pulling on that neck. Um, but a harness is tough with some, like we have a harness, um, but it's just tough to like hold her back. Um, she's about like 70 pounds. So, I mean, it's not like the biggest dog, but it's a good, you know, she's got, she can pull if she wants to. So, um, and when it's on her neck, I don't think that that's great. And, you know, so even a choke might be better, but we, we just never put a choke on her. Oh, wait. I mean, I'm sorry, a prong, a prong, a prong, oh, okay. a prong. Yeah, her, you know, she's got a, like, a, he does have, like, a good thick neck and a lot of hair. So, I mean, I, I don't think, like, prong, even though I think of, I don't want a prong on my neck, but, like, an Akita's neck, I'm not even sure she would, I mean, she, she'll feel it, but I don't think it's going to be quite the same as on her as it would be on, like, me, a human. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, okay. So yeah, it sounds like, um, you know, we'll hear like those stories as well. Like, you know, I rescue my dog and my dog's like scared of everything. I, you know, they, they wonder what happened in the past, but in reality, the, sometimes the past has no, the, the, the past doesn't matter. So dogs okay. only in the present, dogs don't think of, wow, I had a bad day yesterday, or they don't, they don't think like that. They are very reactive animals. Whatever's happening in that moment is what is happening. They, they don't think like, they don't like... They don't see a squirrel and they're thinking, okay, I can't chase a squirrel, but it just happens. They just, they just need to react. Obviously we can train them to not do that, but they're just naturally reactive animals. They don't ponder about the past, the future okay. or anything like that. Human. You'll, you'll hear okay, stories good. where like dogs are like, you know, you know, I think Jesse worked with a dog that like was like shot a few times, like, you know, with like, uh, I'm not sure. I think it was like a BB gun, it was like something right and you know you hear these like this this you know he's the owner is telling you stories about this dog's history and everything but then this dog is happy-go-lucky just like a happy-go-lucky dog like he doesn't care you know obviously we'll have some of those dogs who are are happy-go-lucky and then like something happens and they're they're they're, they're a little more um i guess what is it uh i guess you know uh head shy or something like that just because they don't have a good recovery that's just like genetics so when, when these things happen from like, you know, as soon as they're born, sometimes it's not the breeder. Sometimes it's just, that's just how Nico was born. It's just genetics, you know, the nothing, Okay. not every dog is born the happy go lucky. And then something needs to happen to make them, you know, be this way. Right. Cause this is, this sounds a lot like just genetics, you know, like, you know, um, just like how that, that's how, you know, Nico is, that's just her personality. Um, okay. But, and then same thing with the broom, like, you know, you know they'll find new things that are like what is that and they're very confused and the only thing they want to they're thinking about is just i need to get away because i don't know what that is you know so like right. it'll, it'll, it'll keep popping up you know what like here in the city like when we would walk uh do pack walks with our daycare dogs we would get a dog here and there that would just freak out with the traffic and because they've never been exposed to these things. And then as we kept doing pack walks, they're like, okay, I know what these things are, you know, because that's, they have a good recovery or like they're able to recognize these things and everything like that. But then we have those other dogs who are like stuck at the, nope, I, I'm going to run home and I'm going to scream until I get home. You know, we've, we have, we've had that okay. dog before where they're just, they're just not having it in the city. You know, it, it, it happens. Okay. That's, that's just how they are. And, um, you know, we're able to um, kind of get into that mindset so that can get them out of that mindset because that's what that's what's going on, right? Nico is is and you said it already, like Nico is it's it's, it's like looking at a ghost, right? You're looking at a ghost and nothing is happening, but and you're trying to like tell them like, hey, that's not real. There's nothing there. I, you know, just come to me. You know, that's what. That's what the goal is with the way we're in teach e collar, which I'll dive into uh, in a little bit. But does that make sense? Like why Nico is the way Nico is? It's just it sounds like it's just genetics, and um, like okay. and you pretty much nailed it. Like you know, fearful um, when Nico is showing signs of stress, and you know the warning signs, right? Nico's doing her part, but sometimes humans don't. Um, kind of catch on to these signals so they just kind of proceed with what they're going to do or force something and 
if Nico is stressed enough, like she'll defend herself. Like, nope, I'm not going to do that. You know? Right. Um, so it's just yep, a lot of you know, human error, I guess, just missing the, the signals from Nico. But, you know, Nico's doing her part. Um, I don't, uh, what is it? You know, we, if something like that were to happen to like us, you know, we don't take it personally, you know, it's our fault. We didn't read the situation correctly or it was like a human error, right? Like you said, she's not, actively going after people she's not going to go bite she's doing it because you know she's 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 yeah. too much too much pressure for her does that make sense right yes that's exact and that's what um other trainers like, like think of it part general like like cheese where you're throwing like is everywhere from the age of like four to 14 in like a room like together bouncing all over the place and you've got like little kids that were like play a certain way but then the older kids and she's like for like this one lady was like think of a dog going to a dog park and that's you've got that same setting we went to a dog park and when we lived in the burbs and in Wilmette and she was fine when she was really little but she hit a certain age she beelined for this dog and the dog didn't even do anything to her and it was a lot of growling and she didn't harm the dog, but a lot of growling and it like was scary. Well, the whole beach descended on me at that point. They're like, get control of your dog. You know what I mean? This was the first time I'd ever seen her do something like this. So of course I got control of my dog, but I'm like, okay, there's no more dog beach for Nico. Like that was like, if, if there's going to be a wild card in that, and I don't know what that is and I can't just take her off that lead and she's going to just ignore that we're not going back there because last thing I need is for her to attack a dog, some bad scuffle or something. So you're correct. And, and people have told us that, and we know that, and we know our dog. So we know to be like, let her be, you know, of course there's days where it's raining and she doesn't want to go out and she's not like looking forward to it, but she has to go to the bathroom because it's been like the whole night so yeah, we have to force her to go out. And, and sometimes I used to just go outside the door and be like, oh my God, look at all the squirrels out here. And I'd just say the word squirrel and she'd come right out there. So I'd get her out on her own terms, but that's the kind of stuff I had to do without, like she never bit, she never bit us. She doesn't bite Bryce and me. Um, she'll like put her, she'll grind her feet in and say like, I'm not going out or I'm not doing something, but she would, she doesn't like bite us. Um, occasionally there'll be a growl and you know we'll we'll set her you know we'll just remind her <laughs> that's not that's not what you do with us um and she knows where the alphas in the house however however it's what you said and we just we just want her to understand that um that some of those things she can ignore and we don't know how to train that out of, like we don't know how to train her to know that that's why i found you guys yeah yeah um, so, I mean, we don't, we don't want her to be like, she's not a cuddly dog, get up on the couch and cuddle. She's not that kind of dog. We, that's fine. You know, she's not that kind of dog. We don't, we don't need her to be the bouncy cheerleader dog, but we want her to be confident with who she is and where she is without having to always freak out and stress out. Yeah. It just sounds like you're, you're just looking for, for control. That's all. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know that this is, you know, how the consultation used to go. You know, you tell me what you're looking for, and then we're just giving you what you're wanting, you know. Um, I would so if this if if this works out what I was thinking in my head ahead of time, if this like if you've heard this story like a hundred times and you this is what you guys do, I just thought, okay, should we set up a couple of training sessions where you maybe not board her like right off the bat, just like leading up to September, because if this, we do decide to do this, like I'd want her to know what she's like. I don't want to just call you and be like, okay, I won't see you till September. Here she is. Like, I'd like to maybe do a couple of these things with you and then have you meet her, work with her. So, you know, like, so you can meet her too. Um, see how that thing goes, see how she like, maybe she'll be fine with your whole like the way you guys train dogs like I I'm taking it from a human perspective and from like the thing like what I saw when I used the electric collar and I again rather not do it but if that's what you guys if you know you get results or you know you can work with a dog um that way like 
I would ask you, could you try something that's not that thing at first, or is that like always the method you guys use? Um, say that last question again, I, because they kind of cut off there. Yeah, the electric collar, like, do you always have to train a dog with the electric collar? Or can you use another method? Can you try something else to see if she would like react and respond to you? Um, it's usually always electronic collar. Um, we have never had a dog where we had to be like, yeah, e is probably not for this dog. We've used e collars on, like you said, Akitas, uh, the Shibas, um, they're difficult as well. Shibas, deaf dogs, um, we've, you know, we've e-collar trained. We've had a, we had a four month old Doberman for a board and train. She was completely off leash trained with e-collar. So, you know, as young as four months, but we usually we start at the six months age because the brain has developed enough to kind of understand pressure and like, you know, um, you know, mm -hmm. it's enough. But, you know, deaf dogs, blind dogs, Shibas, Akitas, any, pretty much any breed, uh, even like the, that's what they called. The Anatolian, we had an Anatolian Shepherd and they're, they're more like the guardian dogs, like out in overseas. And they're, uh, you know, they have that protective instinct of like, you know, like I'm kind of like my own, my own self or whatever, but, you know, um, we've done a variety of dogs. And like I said, we've never had a dog where, you know, e collar wasn't for them. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if, so the way we kind of go about it is like, you know, we have gentle leader, right? For puppies, we don't use flat collars or harnesses, right? Because harnesses promote pulling. Harnesses are used for horses. They're used for huskies to pull sleds. They're used for protection training. So in protection training, they have the harness on the dog. They pull back and release. They pull back and release. Because on the chest, when you pull on the chest, it's negative pressure. So it's like those like, you know, those like movie scenes at the bar where like the guys are going to get in a fight and like one guy holds them back and like you see them get more aggressive. It's that same thing. So when owners mm -hmm. have puppies on harnesses and they're, they're, they're doing their walks on harnesses and they, they keep pulling their puppy away from other dogs, eventually that's going to get annoying. And then that puppy's going to get frustrated. And as that, keep, that keeps happening, that puppy's going to let them know I'm frustrated. So when a dog is frustrated, they become vocal sometimes. So that's when they get reactivity. They're like, oh, my dog, my puppy started barking at, you know, six months, like when the brain has started to developing and um, where there's like a change in the brain, like, you know, we're doing the harness stuff. So that's probably where that's coming from. And then that react, that frustration can turn to reactivity. And then the reactivity can turn into dog aggression. So then they're barking at everything because they see a dog like okay there's a dog and i'm gonna get this pressure on my chest and i'm gonna get i'm gonna go forward because they have a thing called opposition reflex you pull back they pull forward you pull left they pull right if you, if you pull forward they pull back you know every every way you go with the harness sure they're gonna go the opposite way because that's what it's used for right um and then after harness we move on you know i mean after gently we move on to prong collar Right, prong collar is a good step forward because now it allows you, you to correct your dog and have more control if they were to lunge they you know they hit the end of the prong so it's correcting them for lunging and you're also having more control um even as it's um i guess like the other tool like a little bit below it would be like slip chain or slip lead um but then the issues with prong collar is sometimes it is uh not enough power to override the brain right? So dogs bite each other, right? With any tool that's out there, e-collar, um, prong collar, slip, heart, whatever, it will never reach the power and pressure of an actual dog bite, right? So we always like mm -hmm. to remind owners that no matter what with the e-collar, right, you will never physically, uh, mentally mess up your dog, right? Because again, dogs bite each other. We will never get to that point of, of dog bite, Right. Obviously, you know, there's certain, you know, people out there who just, uh, you know, just do things for no reason that they abuse their dogs. And that's something different. But like when we're training, mm -hmm. like say a mistake happens. Right. That's like, OK, you, you're, you're, there's a lot of room for gray area for mistakes. But then there's like difference between like, you know, a mistake and there's like, you know, abuse. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, uh, but, 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 yeah, dogs bite each other. Right. So a prong collar sometimes, you know, we'll get the job done when you like, you know, do a leash pop or like, you know, apply pressure, but then sometimes it's not enough. The dog is like maybe on a scale of one to 10, right? On a reactive scale, 
they're at you know the full tent they're you know lunging they're barking they're doing they're doing the whole thing right right and your strongest leash pop could be like a seven right you're never going to override or stop that brain from being reactive or anxious right because you know mm-hmm. even if like me if I, my strongest was a seven out of ten for her then we're not gonna we're never gonna get past that that hump um issues also is like you know prong colors break right so they always fall apart yeah so if it falls apart now you have just lost complete control you have no way to connect to her to kind of get her back to come you know for like a recall right there's no way to connect her connect to her if she's you know doing that you know beeline to a dog or a squirrel or whatever <clears throat> whatever it is that she was you know maybe trying to get to so you know prong is like, like i said it's a good step forward but there's also cons like any tool you know there's pros and cons um and then we move on we move on to e-collar so it sounds like you already had um you know some experience with e-collar um for us the brand we use is called dogtra dogtra is the brand that jesse's been using for many many years um he's had He's tried the other brands that, you know, did not have the same success. Um, another similar brand that is another go-to sometimes is called e Technologies. He used to use e Technologies, but then he found that the dogs are more on edge with the, the feeling of the stimulation from that collar. It's more sharper. So the dogs came out a little bit more like edgy. Dog draws, the, if you feel it, um, have you ever been to a physical therapist? Yeah. Have you ever had TENS unit? I haven't, but like, I remember the lady with these e colors she like put it on us so we could feel what it felt like. And, and I don't think it had that same name you just said. So um, it didn't feel like it hurt me or us, but we just saw what it did to the dog. And we were like, why is her jaw like, sh- like shaking so much from that, like giving her that shock? So that's, it's really a human reaction to what we saw. So we have no idea if the dog was um, mad or stressed out or what. It just didn't look like the dog was responding to that jolt. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure what brand they use or anything like that. Cause there's other, oh, wait, did you say it was dog show or you say that? The no, tendon- I don't know if it was, but I just know she put it on us to say, here's how it feels. Like she put it on our hand so we could be like, know that it wasn't like we were shocking the heck out of a dog yeah yeah so sometimes um you know there's like different functions on it like for us we have a a, a, a a nick and a continuous so like if she was using continuous i don't know that's probably where it came yeah. from like that you know um that like right. that, that moment of like that it felt like a long shock that could have been continuous um i'm not sure you know um, but the way we do it is very similar to humans. Um, and it sounds like she was kind of doing it the same way um, where we're like, we know we keep going up until the, you know, like you get a physical therapist, you know, it's, it's a muscle contractor, right? The, the ones that we use as a, as a muscle contractor, it's the same technology that's used on humans. And Jesse has been told us by physical therapists, you know, she's like, this is the same feeling that we use on humans. So <clears throat> when we're doing this, um like physical par- therapists do they increase it until the human says okay that i'm uncomfortable there then they lower it two levels down and they let the machine do its work it's very similar to the way we do it i don't know what you know nico's number would be mm-hmm. i don't know when she will feel it our e collars go all the way up to 127 so we have 127 levels um there are other models out there that maybe go to 10 so think of 10 10's power outage equal to 127. We just have so okay. many more numbers to be more specific to like the breed, um, the environment, uh, the scenario, anything like that. Uh, we're very specific. So like if, uh, if you're on the 10 e-collar, leveled e-collar, five is getting Nico yelping before Nico's not listening. So then you're stuck. Then for us, if, it's, if that's the case, 40 is too low, 50 is too high, well, we can go to 45. And if 45 is a little too sure. high still, then we go with 42, then 43. We can be very specific to the dog. The goals aren't getting the dogs to yelp or like, you know, barrel roll or crocodile roll or like, you know, you know, roll around and anything like that. That's not the goal. Um, 
there's, it's just very, you know, we have, oh, we have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel. You can watch, you know, you can just watch, you can just type in, you know, Jesus and Miguel, that's the channel and just type in lesson one. And you see okay. everyone's, every, every, every client we have is, is recorded and posted on YouTube. Right. So you can watch anyone you want lesson one. Um, and then you can, I, he, he should have some Shibas on there actually. Um, I know because I, I think they're, aren't they similar breeds, Shibas and Akitas? I think, yeah, I do think, yeah, they're both um, very, they're very more, stubborn, more stubborn, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, <clears throat> see if, I'm not sure if there's an, I, I haven't looked because um, there's been so many videos being uploaded if there's been an Akita recently on the YouTube channel. Um, but there's a lot of videos. You can see how less than one goes. You can just see how it, you know, how dogs take it, how we, how we teach the client and the dog. I think that would help you a lot if just seeing an actual lesson happen, you know, first time dogs putting e on a first time everything's happening, you know? Um, but you know, that's the way we do it. Right. Um, for Nico, right. We need to teach Nico how e collar works and that is that she's the one in control of it. Right, so the, the e-collar would help um, with the reactivity because like you said, it's like looking at a ghost, right? She's, she's looking at something that's not real and then nothing, nothing's happening, but then that needs to be correct with the e-collar, right? So it's either you're gonna believe this ghost or there's something here, or you're gonna respond to this actual physical feeling that's touching you on your neck. Does that make sense? Yes, so, it does. Yeah, the way we teach, um, e-collar first right is like the walking command like the leash walking right now a lot of times owners are like my dog doesn't like bikes and dogs and barks like why would i need to teach my dog how to walk nice on a leash if you know if i'm trying to conquer these things so the reason why our style of walking which is, we call it heel our style of heel yeah. it is very strict it's walk with me sit with me and no, walk with me, stay with me, and sit when I stop, right? So if we take five steps with Nico, Nico takes five steps. If we take 10, Nico takes 10. If we come to a stop on our walk, Nico's to automatically sit. And this is all done with no words said, a loose leash in any environment. And it's her right shoulder glued to your um, left leg, right? Right, now, yep. It's super strict to the point where Nico shouldn't care about anything else because she's like, I need to watch where mom's walking and I need my right shoulder glued to her leg or else I'm going to get this feeling I don't like and I can't really focus on anything else. You know, it sounds super strict to the point where like, wow, these dogs sound like they're not having fun, right? Like I said, it will help you a lot if you would watch these videos and kind of seeing like how they're taking it and how they also progress, you know, from you know, that first lesson to like the last lesson and how they change. And like, you know, cause obviously no one likes getting disciplined. No one likes, you know, this feeling, but as time goes on, once they realize, oh, okay, I know what this means. Then you start to see them kind of like become comfortable with it. You know, my dogs, Jesse's dogs, when we whip out that e-collar, they get all wiggly, they get excited cause they know it means off leash time and like fun we get to go outside, do all these other activities. Um, do you have any yeah, questions so, so far? Yeah. So what? Yeah. So what you just described, 100% agree. That's exactly how like a bunch of trainers have taught us. And in a like dog class or a like very um, structured environment, like inside, she's a stellar student, and she's like, going to be your A plus student. But it's like take her outside and let her be like out in the elements. Like that's where that's where it sort of breaks down because there's too many other influences that are um, like what you just said is that she has to think about, she just, she's not thinking about like, oh, I'm going to get this little zap pain. She's thinking about, Ooh, who's across the street? Ooh, what's that sound I just heard? Ooh, what's this? Like, I mean, whatever a dog's brain does is sort of, it's like out of the controlled environment is where the stuff starts to happen where it's not great. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where that's, that's already telling me that her training doesn't mean anything to her, right? Because we need it to mean something to her anywhere, right? Yeah. There's no point of, how do I say, if we get a board and train and we're only training at the facility, 
that's there's like okay that's that's good she's good here but like you know we do training walks we go to home depot uh, we go to like the parks we we try to go to dog parks we we go to these environments right away because what good is it if it's not going to be real you know realistic outside of you know a control environment right. right there's no point you know like it's like recall like recall for us is not recall if it's not off leash trained right if you need a leash for your dog to come to you every single time then you're that's not recall you need you need to be having that um, um okay you know that off leash recall you know there's we we need to kind of put in those situations um, to you know, let her know like, hey, this obedience that was at the facility also applies here, you know, and that's why e-call is successful because we're able to override the brain of that, right? Because um, that's where prong collar will fail, like the choke chain will fail because there's no, there's nothing kind of stopping her from thinking that of like going to like you know overstimulation mode of like you know what's that, what's this, what's that? Because that's what it is. It's just overstimulation. She doesn't know what to focus on. And she's, she doesn't know what to do when she gets outside. So <clears throat> once we give her something to do, that should start to dip down. And on our reactivity scale, uh, we have like a spectrum. Usually the first things to go away is like humans and like, you know, bikes, rollerblades. And then it goes like calm dogs and then like reactive dogs. And then like you turn the corner, there's a dog there. That's how the spectrum goes. Um, there's, there's usually like once we start training, there's like usually a lot of things that, you know, what I've been noticing, like during the consultations, like they'll, like I'll hear clients, you know, this, this, these, this, these things are issues. And then once we start training, like those issues just never come again. Like they just go away by themselves because we're kind of tackling that overstimulation of like, where you know, Nico can't focus or she's all over the place, right? Because we're giving her a job kind of to focus outside and it's in her yeah. language. It's physical, it's in her language. And that's why dogs like, pretty much understand it uh, right off the bat. Okay, well, I I don't know what you normally tell people like the next step is, but I'm curious if like it would be where I would set something up where you could actually meet us or her and like do an actual session with her or, you know, uh, find out what, you know, next steps would be. Um. So it sounds like because you're you you want just to just to uh what is it um, i don't know the words but to kind of go back is you want the board and train because you want to be able to have her to board somewhere where you need her to board right when you need it so you want that board and train so that she's like oh i know this place and we all know her we know how to handle her or are you just looking well, for training because you're going somewhere and then you want to do the board and train while you're out so I'm going to ask you the following question after hearing what you just told me today is if we go through, you know, training sessions, what does that look like? And so if we do go out of town and either Julie watches her or my uncle watches her or whoever, will she be at the point where like the training is going to be sufficient or do I need to have her under like the watchful care and eye of somebody like you who like, understands knows and will take this job seriously because it's what you said it's the human error that causes the, the problem where things go haywire mm -hmm. yeah so i mean personally i would trust you know i if i would trust this facility or you know with my dog you know versus anyone like i i'm very like my dog has no issues, but just like I would, I wouldn't, I would never. I have a hard time trusting like my like a family of my dog because and she has no issues. It's just like I don't know. I, I I've seen how they handle. It. I was like I don't I don't like it. I have been very picky about certain things, sure. and I would I would definitely just choose this facility over anything with my dog, um, just because I you know everyone here knows e collar. Everyone here knows dog behavior um you know um uh, they know they know these things and they've seen a lot of these things we've got a variety of dogs who you know we have a dog right now who's super stressed of being here and it was giving a hard, us, us a hard time just getting them out the kennel but you know we're able to do it we have the tools and everything you know to like be safe about it and like kind of get through it and once we got him out like ever since you know we kind of you know worked him and like uh, 
like did a little bit of tremo with him, walked him around, got him used to us. He's just been fine now. You know, he's a he's a big boy. He's a Connie kind of Corso. So, you know, we're oh, yeah. able to handle a lot of these breeds. And like he didn't have any training tools on him. Right. We were able to kind of get him muzzled, get an e collar on him. Right. He's already previously trained with Jesse on e collar. And we were able to get all these tools on without any tools already on him. You know, so like I'm, I'm you know, the skill set here is, is, is pretty, um, is really good. Um, but obviously, you know, we can play it by ear as well if you want. You know, like if, if, you know, we're going to the train, you're like, wow, like this is, this is great. You know, like everyone understands, you know, everyone knows how to use this e collar, they know how to control her. And then, like, if you feel if that's something you want to do, you know, keep her with the family or, 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 you know, you can do that. But obviously, and just letting you know that we also offer boarding here and just that everyone here is e-collar trained, like the handlers, they know how to handle the, the e-collars and they know um, a lot about dog behavior already. So that's just, it's just like some, an option for you. Yeah. Um, so do, do people still like come like, so mine's obviously in September and um, I wanted to do it well enough in advance. Like, do you think you should meet her or see her? Or do you think I'm, it's like, again, a human thing where I'm saying like, Oh, I can't just throw the dog in this boarding thing and say bye and see you. Like, like, do, do you think that I was thinking, should I, like bring her there, have a session or have you meet her. And this way, the next time I come there, it's not like I'm going to the vet where it's like, oh, I don't want to go to the vet. You know, like, you know, that like walking into a place where the dog's like, I don't want to go in there, that whole thing. So that's the reason I'm asking you is, should I do a couple of these things? So you meet her, see her that it's not like fresh and new when I first bring her in, when I have to leave for Greece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's not needed. But you can do it, you know. I, 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 we've had, um, what is it? We had a, we had a, uh, um, we've had a client before done like an evaluation for daycare. So, our daycare evaluation is you bring the dog in, and like we, we just like walk them around the facility. We get them used to us. That's like the first day. Second day is like we introduce. We do like a little bit of socialization of just like butt sniffing stuff. We don't let them play. We're just doing mm -hmm. exercises to see how they are with dogs. The third day is then, okay, let's see how they are with dogs. And we'll, like, we'll put them in like on one-on-one -on -one, or like if they're good with that, then we'll like, kind of slowly integrate them in a play group. So owners have done like the evaluation first before they did anything else because they wanted to see how their dog was just like in the facility. Um, so you can do that. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. If anything, it, it, will, it will definitely like, you know, help us here and there, but it wouldn't make her like the facility, right? Her liking the okay. facility is is something okay. that it's something that she needs to make a decision on her own, right? So she can, okay. she can become comfortable where she's like, I know this place, I know what they're about, and she's familiar, right? That that's a good thing, but you know, usually in the Got evaluations, it. the dogs are super stressed. They don't know where they're at, and they don't want to come back because they just like, I don't know what was going on there. I don't want to go back, and there's this very strange experience, and like you Got know because you're just dropping off your dog. They don't know what's going on. You can't really explain to them that you're going to be here for training. You know, these guys are really not, you know, you can't, they don't understand that. So, um, All right, you might, so you're you know, saying, you might, oh, yeah, sorry. you're saying basic, I'm sorry too. You're basically saying if, if I'm ready to commit to board train for those two weeks that I asked about originally is the, the thing that's going to make, um, it, it might make me at ease to see your place, but she's not going to know, like, or she may or may not know one thing or another. It, it, the dog doesn't think of it the same way I do, where it's like, hey, I might like putting my dog in a good place, um, that kind of thing. So it's really me seeing the facility. It's more for me, not for her. Yeah. It, it's I mean, kind of, I yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, you can still do it. And like I said, I, I could also say it might, it will provide a, at least a familiarity with like, you know, us and her, you know, it's not just like a surprise, you know, out of nowhere thing, yeah. you know? but either way it'll, um, but okay. yeah. I mean, maybe, I, you know, maybe, maybe I should just do that. Like what you're saying, instead of like begin a whole training session in advance of this thing is just like, just come by, see it. You can meet her. She can meet you. But it's not for her. It's not going to be, be one thing or another in September. It's more that I, I get it. You get to see me. You get to see her. But that's really it. Yeah, and we wouldn't do any training like e collar stuff. 
Um, it'll just be like her getting familiar with the facility so that when you do drop her off, she already knows like what, what's, what's going on and everything. Um, I will say that though, if you're going to do like, cause you said September, let's say you do the evaluation example. This is just an example, like tomorrow, like Thursday and yeah. like, you know, Monday or like something. Right. And then you don't come back till September. Then your dog has kind of regressed from that moment you know what I'm because there's been too much too much of a break um a space okay. from that so if you're going to do the evaluation um it'd probably do be it closer. near yeah near september um okay you know maybe even like the three days before the the boarding just so like we're, we're kind of getting a feel for her and everything she's getting a feel for the facility um is nico a quick question sorry is nico crate trained what is she i'm sorry what was that question Kennel. Does she know how? To, is she kennel trained or crate trained? Um, no. Uh, she's like we. I'm trying to think. Did we have a crate? We may have had a crate right at the beginning, but um, like she has never. She doesn't go into a crate or like stay in a crate. Okay. No crate. Okay. Um. Definitely revisit that so that when she comes here, she has, a, again, um, some familiarity with being in a kennel if she's going to be a boarding train because we, we count all the dogs at night. Um, obviously, if she's having issues, um, you know, we can leave her in a space, um, like an open space. Like a, it's like a playpen area, you know, if she's not doing the kennel. Um, but um, see what you can do on your part to make it easier for us, like having her kennel trained. Um, but, 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 but what else? Um, there's another question I'm going to ask. Oh, and then um, is, is, is Nico muzzle conditioned? Has she ever worn a muzzle before? No, um, that's the other thing is uh, my husband feels that the muzzle, like I, I've had to put a muzzle on her. The vet, um, I want to make sure that she like didn't do anything there, or they had to like put that on just to make sure. Although the, what the vet said to me last time, because with pandemic they don't let you go in anymore, they said um, they've loosened like the little thing on their record that like Nico isn't as aggressive as like originally thought, or maybe I made up because I'm so nervous for her. Um, they've removed the requirement for the muzzle. She's had had it on, but my husband Bryce doesn't feel muzzles are great because um, once you take the muzzle off, um, he thinks the dog it thinks like, okay, free reign, I get to go, like do whatever I want. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we would need we would need her muzzle conditioned, and the muzzles we use are not like. Um, like the ones that shut the mouth. Uh, we use like a, it's the brand is called Baskerville and they're shaped okay. like a basket so that Nico can open her mouth and pants. And sometimes it makes dogs think that they can use their mouth because they're able to open it still in the muzzle. So okay. um, we would need her muzzle condition just because she did bite out of stress and fear. So if we're training her and then she's stressed, we don't want to have the risk of having a 70 pound Akita kind of like redirect <laughs> her frustration to us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, right. I, I agree. Yeah. So just kind of just to be on like the safe side, we would, we would have her muzzle because we have a dog right here right now. Um, he's, I mean, he's like the biggest pit bull I've ever seen. He's like really, he's big and he's bitten uh, a few people as they enter the home and he's territorial. So we have him, we had him muzzled for like, uh, every, every day we worked with him and we were giving him muzzle breaks and everything. Like we were in the kennel and like, he was able to drink water and like roam around and everything like that. But when we were working with him, he was muzzled and we didn't see anything. So like for his last few days, we, we just didn't use the muzzle and like we, he's been fine, but he has a bite history and everything, but we need to be on the safe side in the beginning, just to make sure that nothing will happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, um, I will, send you the link of the muzzle brand we use that's you can buy it on amazon and you would need to um kind of get her 
uh, use the muzzle condition, uh, me, uh, condition her to the muzzle as like soon as you can. Um, okay. Um, so after this um, consultation, I will send you a follow-up email about everything we talked about. Like the, um, I, if you're interested in the boring training, I'm, I'm thinking um, maybe like the two week program um, or like how long were you, cause you're, you're gonna go out of town, you said, right? To, to Greece, how long were you gonna be at yeah. Greece? Sorry. The dates I gave your um, gal when I first called was um, we on the 15th. So I was gonna do the 14th um, to we get back, like land on the 29th. So the, like, I don't remember the time, but then I was thinking pick her up on the 30th. Like that's 14th to 30th is what I was thinking. That's, um, and then this is in July, this is July, right? Oh no, you said September. September, September. So the 14th to the 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's good. I think that's really good. Um, so we do by, we, we're kind of going, we're, I think we're gonna go over a little bit of time, but we have like the one week, two week, three, four week program. I'd be, you'd be in like the more mm -hmm. than two week or three week. But if you're dropping mm -hmm. her off the 14th, you're already, 21st mm -hmm. is already a week. The 28th is already two weeks. And then if you want to pick her up the 30th, that works. But those would just be like regular boarding days. Like she would just like, you don't, sure. you wouldn't need to pay anything. It'd just be like, uh, 50, it's 50 bucks for just a regular boarding night. So that'd just be like a hundred bucks. Oh no, 50 bucks because of the 29th. And if you're going to pick him, pick her up 30th, there wouldn't be a boarding fee because there's, there's only one night extra she's staying. Sure. Uh, so it'd be, uh, yeah, two-week border and train. I send you the muzzle of the pricings of the two-week border and train and like what a payment plan would look like. Um, the e-collar I recommend for Nico and then the option to, for you to purchase it through Amazon or you can just um, purchase it through us so that we have it here. So when you come, when she comes, we have just the e-collar here. You don't need to worry about bringing it or anything like that. It's kind of personal preference. We sell them for the same price. Um, okay. And then a uh, form that needs to be signed. Um, it's uh, just like an agreement um, form, um, and then just like registering your dog into our our daycare boarding um, facility because we need like shot records and a few other things yeah. since they're here with like the, the other daycare dogs and everything. All right. Well, if you want to send me all that, and then I'll go through everything uh, with my husband. And that's why I wanted to get a head start on this because I, I know that I like, can't wait for like the last minute, obviously. But I wanted to know a little bit more about this and to see if like what you know what you were going to say about it. Yeah, it. Obviously, sounds like you've done dogs that are in the difficult category or anxiety category. So like, seems like you do that. It was really to understand like the e collar the boarding, um, how this would work, like logistically, that whole thing. Yeah. Um, do you have any other questions about the e-collar or like the training or anything? I'm going to watch some of your YouTubes, I think. I think I saw one before the call and spend a little time on that. And then if I do, I may just do a follow-up email just to ask you some questions. But otherwise, you've answered it. You were really thorough and you've given me a lot of in information on this call. Yeah, um, definitely, you know, reach out if anything pops up, any questions of like, you know, of the video or just another question about the e -collar. Um I could, there are two questions that clients usually ask me um, during the consultations. If you have time to go over them, I know we're over the time. Um, if you have to go, it's fine. Um, no, that's... I'm sorry? Go ahead. Okay. No, I don't. I if you have time, I certainly can hang out for a little bit more. Yeah. So, um, uh, a common question is, um, you know, um, is the e-collar going to be on, you know, Nico forever, or is it like after training? Does it come off at a certain point, or like when do I need it on, or like in the home do I need it on? Like, you know, how does how does how, how does that work? So it's usually it's on when you need it. So if you're going to go walk with Nico, the e-collar would always be on even after training. Right, because we can't predict or what we can't um, guess or like predict what's going to happen on this walk. So let's say you know Nico is you know doing great. 
with like her reactions to um, surprises. And then all of a sudden like a car crash happens, right? Nico has never experienced a car crash. So this is something new. So then let's say it catches you off guard because she's been doing so good, right? So let's say, you know, she, it happens, you're caught off guard, she's caught off guard. We've had incidents where the dogs like pull the owners to the ground or like the leash slips out and they're gone or like the prong color breaks and they're just gone. They're in flight mode, right? When dogs are in flight mode, they're thinking kill or be killed. So Nico come won't bring Nico back if she is running for her life, right? So that's where the e collar comes in handy to override the brain in that moment to kind of snap her out of it saying, hey, you don't do that. You need to come back to me. Uh, does that make sense? Yep, it does. And that was a question I had when you were talking about it. You're right. I forgot to ask you. But yes, it was a question. I yeah. Had. yeah. Um, so it'd be on and walks just because we can't predict, right? Now, you shouldn't really be tapping or using that button after training like a lot because like right now you know jesse's dogs are fully trained my dogs are fully trained you know we press the you know jesse will say you know i press a button like once every two months maybe you know it's it's there in it for emergencies right we're not actively always right. using it it's just there in case something happens now in the home let's say you know uh nico was an angel then you don't need the e-collar. She wouldn't be wearing it inside. Let's say you're going to have guests come over. You know, Nico is kind of um, a little iffy or something. Maybe she's like very in their face or very like too much. Then you would collar her up 30 minutes prior, address whatever that is needing to be addressed. And if you find that Nico is pretty much relaxed throughout the night after those, you know, uh, moments of addressing her behavior, then you can just take it off as, as, and when, you, when you address these things. Um, does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, nope, that's, it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, one more question they have is, um, you know, how come when I take the e-collar off, Nico goes back to like pulling me on a leash or she goes back to, you know, jumping on me or, you know, doing some certain behaviors that were addressed on e-collar, but why is it that when I take it off, she's back to like her old, you know, um, inappropriate behaviors. So it's called opportunistic behavior. Um, you know, the example Jesse likes to use for his clients for humans is that, you know, he asks, do you drive on the highway? Usually everyone drives on the highway. Then he asks, do you go the speed limit? Everyone's answer is, is usually no. Um, they don't go the speed limit. But once they see a squad car, everyone slows down. Once that squad car <laughs> is out of their, their, their vision or out of, you know, out of their, their view, then they go back to the same speed they were going to before, which was not the speed limit. So again, it's opportunistic behavior. It's, it's a nature thing, right? If we know we can get away with something, we're going to get away with it. It has nothing to do with the training, the e-collar, or the way you guys practice. It's just the dog. They're just, they, they just know, right? Um, we will give you other tools and methods to use so you're not so reliant on the e-collar and like, you know, training exercises that aren't so reliant on the e-collar for you to use at home. Um, it, if it makes you feel better, you're, you, you know, you're also welcome to have it on in the home. Um, usually like, you know, the older couples are the ones that have it on in the home all the time because they're, they are older and they can't keep up with the dog. So I had a client one time that the dog it was a little terrier dog would literally pick up anything and run away with it and just run, run, run. And they, they, they just couldn't keep up with it. So they, they have, you know, comfort pads on the e so that they don't get pressure sores from, you know, two metal probes being on the neck for such a long time. So they're able to mm -hmm. have a long way on it. And then we know if he did that, they would able, they were just, you know, press a button, right? But since they were so consistent with pressing the button, when every time he did that, he stopped doing it. He just, it just was a behavior that just went away because they were so consistent with it. Um, makes okay. a lot, makes life easier. It's just, you know, uh, e is very simple. It's just pressing a button. Um, any questions about those, 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 those? No, I do understand the concept. I do understand like what that connection is now that you've gone through that. Yeah. And Nico will never know you're the one pressing the button. So, um, you know, a lot of owners will say, you know, will my dog hate me? Um, if I'm, you know, using this on them and it's like, no, they don't know it's you. They know it's you when you have the leash in your hand and then you're yanking them with it. They know it's you for that. And that's where prong collar can become an issue because it's confrontational. They see you doing it and they don't like it. So they know it's you. So they're going to, you know, confront you about it. But if the e-collar 
they don't know it's you so they have nowhere to go they have nowhere to 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 kind of like you know tell they have no one to tell back like no you know um okay and then um one more is transference so sometimes when owners are doing a boring train they're wondering like you know like you you, you basically already said like you know yeah the dogs go with the trainer but once the trainer leaves the dog is terrible right that won't happen because when i press the button on 30 and you press the button on 30 it's the same thing there's no i'm stronger than you so i can control the dog sure. more, you know so like when couples are you know usually partner number one goes first they do all the hard work like for the in-person trainings when partner number one goes first they do the hard work because in in-person training it's all verbal instruction we don't touch the dog we we coach them to do it so when partner number one's doing it, um, uh, it's hard work. They're doing all the hard work. Then they hand, hand off the dog to partner number two, and it's super easy, right? Because they already did the hard work, and like the dog already knows what to do, and then they feel the same feeling with this person. Like, okay, it's, it's the same thing for you. So transference is very easy and 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 it, it good for for the boring trains. You also get um, two hours of video um, of us working with Nico. So every single command is recorded from the moment we put the e-collar on and like we go through all the commands. So heel, stay, sit down, place, and recall is all taught in the board and train program. It's all recorded. Um, and then you get four hours of follow-up for the two-week board and train. So after your board and train, we can schedule a follow-up upon pickup or, you know, during the board and train um, and you get four hours. So like you can do an hour, you know, upon pickup or two hours okay. maybe. And then, it, and then so on and so forth. Okay, well, this has um, been a ton of info. So I will share with Bryce everything you said and then um, look for your email, look at your YouTubes and then uh, get back to you on like confirming the dates and kind of what the, or, like the progression of stuff is that we would need to do and when, like what you've said with the consultation, et cetera. Yes. Okay. Um, it was cool. very nice speaking with you. Um, yeah, like thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Have a good night. You too. And I'll talk to you soon. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.